Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Morgan and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my experiences with therapy and what you can expect the first time you go to therapy. So I've been going to therapy for about six months now. I went once before, one time in 2015, or is either the end of 2015 or the beginning of 2016. And that very first experience was horrible and it scared me off of therapy for just about four years, three or four years. And I don't want anyone else to be scared off of it because it's super beneficial. Even if you don't have like a big issue you're working through, it's just a good thing for anyone to kind of talk through what's going on. And it helps you learn how to cope with your emotions in such a healthy way. And it helps you kind of look at your relationships and analyze them and see how you could be a bit better partner, a better friend, just a better person um, by learning how to understand yourself and what you're feeling and how that might project onto others. So first, I just thought I'd share a little bit about that very first experience I had with therapy to drill home the point that not every therapist is going to work for every person. So in 2016, I left college. I was super depressed. I was honestly a mess. I was crying every single day for like five or six hours a day. Um, it was, I was dealing with a really, really bad depression. I thought I was just this horrible person who shouldn't be alive. I thought I was a waste of space. I thought everybody secretly hated me. My parents were glad I was gone from college. I felt so guilty leaving college because I was like, now they're gonna have to deal with me. And just, I was not in a good place. I don't even know how I let myself get that bad, but that's kind of what happens when you're dealing with things like depression. It starts to spiral and before you know it, it's really too late for you to fix it yourself. So my parents were like, okay, we want you to see this therapist. Or get referred to a therapist. So I went to my general practitioner, who I also did not like, and I have officially like broken up with her, but I went to my general practitioner and she referred me to a therapist and I went to the first therapy session. It was like in a general doctor's office, so I had to be in a waiting room with a bunch of other people going for like general doctor things, like a family practice. And I was so nervous to begin with and I was just sitting there and then in walks this guy I know who was there to get like immunizations. And he's like, oh, what are you doing here? And we, I knew him, but we weren't like friends to where I'd be like, I'm super depressed. I don't want to be alive, so I'm going to therapy. So instead I just like didn't say anything. And I was like, and it was super awkward, but that's okay. Um, so that was just like set it off to a bad, that's the point of that. Like already I was like, oh, this is not going well. And then she called me back. She was an older woman, probably late 50s, early 60s at that point. And she's like, okay, so what are you here for? And immediately I started to cry. I said, I am like not in a good spot. I've been super, super upset and I feel so much anxiety and I just feel kind of worthless and all of this. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Like, I'm here to help you. This is like gonna be so beneficial for you. So that made me feel good. And then she's like, I just want to get to know you a little bit. So tell me about your personal life. Like, are you dating someone? So I briefly told her about my boyfriend. And at that time I was dating someone I went to college with. So I said, you know, he actually lived across the street from me in college. I was like, he's across the street. I see him like basically every single day, blah, blah, blah. blah. And she said, okay, well tell me about your parents. What's your relationship with like them? What was your relationship with them when you were young? And I briefly told her, I was like, got kind of like a stereotypical like all American family. I've got my mom and dad, they're still together. I've got an older brother and that's like the family unit. Um, and at that point, my brother and I weren't super close. I told her that cause she asked, I said, we get along, but like, we're not like, you know, friends or anything. Um, we just have different interests. She's like, okay. And then she's like, do you and your parents ever fight? And he's like, no. And then she, it was just kind of like digging into the family life, which of course I respect, but I really didn't say anything that I feel like should have been interpreted as a red flag. But then at the end of the session, she's like, I know where this is all coming from. And then she was saying I had like mom issues, even though like all I really said about my mom was that she's married to my dad, we don't fight. And then she's like, and you need to be honest with me, is your boyfriend hitting you? And I was like, no, he's not hitting me. It was just like a comical thing almost for her to suggest because that was not the dynamic at all. And then she's like, you really need to like open up to me. This is only going to work if you're honest with me. And it's like, I am being so honest. This is not like what I wanted to talk about. And she basically was just frustrated with me because she thought I wasn't telling her things, even though she wanted me basically to lie. I think she thought 
instead of a therapist, she was like a psychic and she was like getting information from the spirits or something because she was saying things that we didn't even talk about. And so we were both frustrated with each other. It was visible. I did not make another appointment. I did not go back. I very shortly after moved to New York City and thought that was gonna fix all my problems. So I did not go to therapy again until June. In April, my grandpa died and I cry whenever I talk about it. So I'm gonna like try to not do that because that's not what this video is, but we, <laughs> sorry. I can't talk about anything that matters without crying. So that's just, something about me that I'm trying to work past but yeah it was really hard for me to function I stopped really sleeping which was super difficult instead of sleeping I would just sob and Garrett was such a trooper <laughs> trying to comfort me all night even though he had to get up and go to work and function as a human being and he just had this blubbering mess in bed beside him but he was great um, I don't know what I would have done without him and my cats so there was that, and then because I wasn't sleeping, I started to hallucinate, just like seeing things in my vision, basically. Like I would think that the wall was covered in spiders, like from this side of me, or I would think that there was somebody sprinting at me from this side. I was just having, my mind was making things up. I was so sleep deprived. I wasn't absorbing information around me the way it should, and so my mind was trying to fill in the blanks, I guess. My therapist put that a lot more eloquently than I did right there. But basically she said when you get so little sleep, all of a sudden like the connection between your visual and your brain is kind of lazy and tired. So then your brain's trying to make things up. I think that's kind of what she said. But yeah, I was having like these hallucinations. It got really bad once I was driving and then I thought there was a car coming at me. And so I slammed on the brake and then the person behind me like laid on their horn. So. It was bad. I was in a really bad place. Um, not somewhere I ever want to be again. And therapy actually really helped me um, because I found the right therapist. I was reluctant to go back to therapy after the first visit. Um, Garrett actually talked to my dad and was like, hey, she's like, not doing good. I don't know what to do. You're her dad. Like, <laughs> what can you do? And so my dad, well, then my dad's like, okay, Morg, let's go to lunch. And he took me to lunch and I had no clue this was going to happen. He was like, so Garrett, talk to me and I want you to just, like see a therapist. And I just, I was still so fragile right there. I started crying right in the Johnny Steakhouse. Not one of my finer moments, but just got some tears in my salad, extra salt. It was fine. But yeah, so my dad is like an acquaintance with a guy who owns a family therapy practice. So he talked to him and he got me in and... I found a wonderful therapist there. There were two that he recommended and they both kind of took a more holistic approach as opposed to medicating. Um, both of them aren't like anti-medication for mental illness. They just want to approach it holistically and then if that doesn't work, go to medication, which I did not want to go on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medicine or anything like that um, unless it was the last resort, which is kind of the philosophy they had. So I appreciated that. Um, the one I ended up getting paired with, like right away I knew I was going to like her. So she was an older woman, which I wanted. I wanted a woman and I wanted, there are a few younger people at practice I knew from looking at their website, which I think is incredible, but I didn't want to feel like I was talking to a peer. I get a little awkward talking to people my age, like whether it's about something that matters or just in general, I'm much better at making friends with like the boomers than I am millennials, which is horrible and I wish. That wasn't the case because I want to be better at like connecting with people my age. It's just something I'm working on. But I liked that she was like an older woman. Is That's kind of what I was in the market for as far as a therapist went. And that first session, I don't want to say it wasn't productive, but it, it wasn't productive because basically she called me back and she's like, okay, I read through your file. Well, let me rewind. First, I had to fill out a bunch of paperwork saying why I was there. It was asking so many different questions, like general ones, really specific ones, some that felt uncomfortable to answer. And I honestly left some of them blank. I was like, I don't want the answer of this on paper. So if she wants to ask me these questions, I will talk about them, but I'm not going to have, I'm not going to write them down. So, and that was fine. They kind of flipped through it when I turned it in and they didn't say anything about me not filling in all the answers. So if you're not comfortable with any of the questions, just don't fill them in. But it did take a while. They asked me to come half an hour early and I did. And it took me probably 20 minutes to fill out all the paperwork. 
So at first it was just like name, age, birthday, like anything you're allergic to, any medications you're on, any recent surgeries, like basically anything you would get at any doctor's appointment. And then it got more specific. It was asking, have you thought about, you know, hurting yourself in the last 30 days? Have you thought about hurting somebody else in the last 30 days? If you were to hurt yourself, how would you do it? Like questions that were kind of uncomfortable, like, like I said. Um, so I filled all those out and then just waited. And when she called me back, this is where it gets to be kind of unproductive. She's like, okay, I read through your pamphlet. Like, I understand you're having trouble coping with the loss of your grandpa. Now I'm going to cry again. Bear with me. Anyone who knows me has seen me cry before because it's just like this awful part of my personality. The tears come out if I'm overly happy, overly sad, overly frustrated, overly angry. The tears just flow. So I mostly just sob and then I was so apologetic. I'm like, I'm so sorry for wasting your time. Like, I am so, so sorry. And then she's like, no, it's fine. This was actually super beneficial, even if like you don't understand how, because she said it's important to kind of gauge just my emotional state. And then she was like, I'm kind of observing some of your triggers because I would get myself under control and then she'd ask something. And sometimes I'd be able to like say yes or no. And sometimes I wouldn't be able to answer and I would just sob. So she said it helped her understand the things that upset me better. So I didn't have to be super apologetic like I thought I did. She had plenty of tissues, which I used liberally. I used so many of her tissues. Um, she probably thought I was so gross. I thought it's interesting though, because I was like, I'm so sorry for wasting your time. She told me, because she deals a lot with younger um, girls and women. She said it's mostly teenage girls and then like women under the age of 30. And she said she's got like some of the teenage girls there who are there because their parents force them. And they do not speak the entire time. So she was like, I would much rather have you who's here like willing to work with me than one of those teenage girls who's just gonna sit and stare at me. So it made me feel a little better. So that first session didn't feel productive. She said it was. And then I went the next week. And next week I did a little bit better. And she had some ideas for me on things I could do to help myself cope. You're probably watching this and being like, therapy's obviously not working. You're sitting here sobbing, but you should have seen me before therapy. So yeah, the next session she was like, we need to kind of reprogram your triggers. She's like, one thing you can do is when you think about your grandpa, like automatically force yourself to think of something happy, which is still something I'm working on. Because right now my instinct is to think about my loss when I should be thinking about something happy. But it works like half the time. We kind of got to the point where I was doing and am doing pretty well as far as that loss is concerned. So then we kind of started working on other areas of my life and like talking about relationships that I'm in. Um, obviously like non-romantic and then I'm only in one romantic relationship, which I mean, not obvious, but because there is polyamory, but that's not my lifestyle. I am monogamous. So we started talking about like my relationship with my parents, my brothers, my friends, and then my relationship with Garrett. I just, I don't have really any negative relationships in my life. I did when I was younger and I've gotten kind of good at cutting out negative people. So, but we basically just talked about how to strengthen the relationships I do have and it was super kind of insightful just talking about things that like frustrate me about like relationships in my life and then she was helping me kind of look at things in a different way like yes that's frustrating but from their perspective x y and z which has made me more understanding of certain things and it's helped me kind of react better to things and we've talked about like different boundaries which boundary setting is amazing and most of the boundaries i've needed to set were with myself um for a while, I was kind of obsessed with working and making money, which is not a healthy mindset to have. So we've kind of created boundaries there where I've got kind of enough in my savings that I can take a few months to make less and just breathe. And I've become such a calmer person for it, so much less anxious. There was a time um, when I was working full time I'd wake up at about 6 and I'd work on my blog until I had to start working at 8.30 and then I would get off work at 5.30 and I'd work on my blog until about 8 and then I might read and then work on my blog more and it burnt me out. I was, I feel like... And it burnt me out, like it wasn't healthy. Um, the great thing about blogging is I have passive income coming in now and my passive income almost 
covers all of my expenses, like my bare necessity expenses. So she kind of talked and challenged me. She's like, how about you let your passive income take you for a few months and then really dive back into blogging when you feel like you're healed, which I'm kind of at the point where I feel healed. January is a hard month, so I feel like there's a little bit of struggle just because I've got the January blues, but it's been nice where I feel like I've recovered, I've taken time for myself, and I know I come from like a really privileged position of being able to do that. I got lucky in making money blogging when I was young, um, and that's not possible for everyone, but for me and where I was at in life, where I was like regularly working 14, 15, 16 hour days for about two years, um, it just wasn't good for me and it really took a toll on my self-esteem. I was putting all of my worth in how much money I made that month blogging, how many page views I got on my blog, how many followers I had on Instagram, things that like don't matter. And so by taking like a little bit of a break and focusing on myself and the things that do matter to me, I've been able to find a lot more self-worth and things that are actual value, actually valuable, like how I treat other people, the relationships I have with um, in my life, the good things I do that benefit people that aren't just me, which sounds terrible to say, but that's how I measured my worth, my success was my blog. And now I've got like a much healthier look at blogging and it's something that brings me joy again instead of just stress. So I appreciated working on that with her. Um, but yeah, if you're going to therapy and you have any questions, you can privately message me on Instagram or leave it in the comment if you don't mind it being public. I don't have a ton of followers, so people probably won't see your question, but I will answer it. Um, my Instagram is just at Morgan Tim. I'll have it linked below. My Twitter is at hello Morgan Tim. I am less active there, but I do my best. I um, will be back soon with another video. I'm trying to post weekly now. I'm putting that out into the universe. I've filmed three videos in the last day, so all in this sweater. So I hope you guys don't get sick of it. I know a lot of YouTubers change, like if they're filming on the same day. I'm not at that level yet, but maybe next time. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye!